Hello. I'm here at this secret location to film the first UK firing of the 6-inch rocket. Also here, setting up their gear, are the BBC Bangos the Theory team. Television plays an important role in getting the latest Bloodhound news to the public, and we're very lucky that Bangos the Theory will be joining us for the entire project. The show goes out in over 20 countries, and its enthusiasm and excitement over science and learning fits exactly with the educational aims at Bloodhound. Once everything's set up, it's time for some safety briefings. Chris Bucock's General Health and Safety talk is followed by a dramatic demonstration by Daniel Job. Uh, you may not get any instant reaction, so you may uh, take your jacket off, uh, get, you know, get some uh, get some peroxide on your jacket, go home, take your jacket off, hang it up on the hook, <coughs> and then be uh, eating your tea when it uh, spontaneously bursts into flames uh, sat on the hook. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're very careful when we wear the, that external protection. That if you do think you've uh, had some external contamination, that's washed off before you take off your PPE. If we take the uh, dirty rag, where the uh, contamination is more present, you can see the result is instant ignition and the uh, combustion is supported by the oxygen liberated. Safety clothing is going to be needed and a fire crew is on hand to immediately dilute any spillage. Yes, uh, we get into these? Yes, some protective uh, equipment for handling the HDP. It's interesting to see how the BBC handles a shoot like this. It's quite a large crew with three cameras and a specialist for every job. Actions are performed several times so that they can be filmed from different angles. Same hand. Normally they're kind of white on the inside and yellow on the outside. Well, it's they, quite easy to tell. It's the, it's the I've label. got both of them inside out. Right. After Daniel and Jem have put on their boots three times, done their zips up four times and walked into the bunker twice, you don't need a brain the size of Daniel's to work out that the 12 o'clock firing is going to slip. There's a brief discussion and the shooting continues in a more documentary style. Jim, the show's presenter, is going to be Daniel's buddy. This system is often used when working in hazardous environments, as it gives a second pair of eyes to make sure nothing's overlooked. Jim's made many experiments with rockets before, including making and riding his own rocket bike, but this is the first time he's prepared a system like this. To familiarise him with the process, and as a test of the equipment, a run-through is done using deionised water instead of HDP. This means it's safe for us to remain in the bunker and film the preparations. So as rocket oxidizers go, this stuff isn't the worst. Definitely not. Uh, it's the first things to check are the two remotely operated switches which will control the release of HTP and nitrogen. Then this large tank is filled with HTP, or in our case, water. Finally, we need a way to force the HTP into the rocket. In the car we'll be using a Formula One engine to drive a pump, but here we'll be using bottled nitrogen. The test run with deionized water goes as planned and it's all hands on deck to bolt the catalyst into the rocket and get it firmly fixed onto its test bed. then retire to the safety of another bunker, leaving Daniel and Jem to fill the tank with HTP. Once they're safely back, the countdown can begin. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, valve cracked. Crack more. Crack more. The huge blast overwhelms the microphones and one of the cameras. Even though we're in a bunker 150 metres from the rocket, which is also in a bunker, the noise is very impressive and makes the ground shake. Success! Nothing, nothing fierce, nothing <laughs> Oh, I'm relieved. Daniel returns to check the equipment and reveals that everything functioned exactly as it should have. 
We've had a great time working with the uh, BBC today and uh, Jem in particular. Uh, he's built his own hybrids before so he has a good understanding of, uh, of the principles involved and also running them so he certainly didn't hesitate to uh, pick up a spanner and uh, help us with the preparation and I was more than happy to have him as my uh, as my buddy for the uh, setup and HGP loading. Worked really well and uh, I think he enjoyed himself. Nobody died, no rockets exploded and the test looked perfect. Um, Daniel measured the thrust, they're up at about 1, 1 1.2 tonnes of thrust, which is a massive amount of thrust for what's only a third scale of what's going to go on the Bloodhound car. Daniel seems happy that from this it will probably scale up. So you may be looking at 10 tonnes of thrust on the real thing, which bodes well for a thousand miles an hour. The key thing to remember is that there is a real person at the steering wheel at the front of that thousand mile an hour car and every single one of these tests here are absolutely vital and I think that in what will be learned in doing this that the knowledge could go a lot further than just a supersonic car. Right, ready? Is everyone ready? Ready. Three, two, one. Whoa!